Hello everybody, another fabulous recipe today. An oven roasted omelette, the frittata. This one is gonna be with broccoli, with goat cheese. Fabulous, be sure to stay tuned. If you like the recipe, subscribe. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to ring the bell. All right, let me show you how to make that perfect frittata. It's very simple. The secret, everything I do is simple. <laughs> The secret, friends, is mise en place. Everything ready to go before you start cooking. Remember, that's the most important part. As a matter of fact, you know, I've been teaching people how to cook my whole life. And uh, I've been doing this for 54 years. And I'll tell you what, if I have one advice to give to everybody that wants to be a better cook, mise en place. Do not start cooking until everything is chopped and ready to go. I see it all the time. People that are not enjoying cooking. They, they're chopping and dicing and cooking and chopping. And you can't do it. Can't do it. It's impossible, friends. You cannot do both at the same time. I don't care how good you are with a knife. You cannot chop and dice at the same time you're cooking. If you want to enjoy cooking, that is. If you want to be a scatterbrain in the kitchen and, 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 and not enjoying cooking, then keep doing what you're doing. Take my advice. And you know, in a restaurant business, that has to be one of them. I'm sure there's some chefs that are looking at this and are saying, he's right. That is the most important thing in the restaurant business. If you have 10 cooks and one of them doesn't have his mise en place, it could screw up the whole restaurant the whole night. One cook then doesn't have his mise en place. Home, same thing. Let me tell you what we got here. We got potatoes. A little too much potatoes. I don't need all this. The regular potatoes, I dice them and I put them in water so they don't... Uh, uh, they don't turn on us. They don't tarnish on us, right? So it's a little too much potato in here. I don't need all those potatoes. So little potatoes in there, right? And then I got sweet potatoes. I got onion in there. First thing, of course, we do, as we always do, we make sure the onion are caramelized a little bit. I got to take my thermometer. I always forget to take my thermometer to check my temperature of the oil. I don't want to go in a coil oil. So if I got about uh, 350, I'm comfortable. I'm going to put my onion, I'm going to caramelize them, and then I'm going to put my potatoes. And what I like to do when I make home, it's kind of like home fries, uh, you certainly could add some bacon in there too if you wanted to. But this is a very simple recipe. Yeah? We'll talk about the ingredient in a second. Let me first get this going, right? First thing we do is we get the onion. We wait for a second for the onion to be lightly caramelized, and then we'll put our potatoes in there. And then we're gonna cover this. We're gonna cover them for a few minutes, and then we're gonna cook them. Let me tell you what's so special about this, uh, this frittata recipe. I see so many people cooking frittata on YouTube, and, uh, and it gives me a nightmare to watch them. You do not go in the oven with a hot pan. You do not put the egg of your frittata in a hot pan. You don't do that. Otherwise, what's going to happen is if you, if you use the same pan right there, you put your egg in a pan, hey, guess what's going to happen? The bottom of your frittata, the side of frittata is going to be already cremated the minute you put the egg in there. By the time you're in the oven for 25 minutes, 30 minutes to cook the whole frittata, guess what's going to happen to the outside? It's going to be all burned. And a good egg is not supposed to be dry and golden brown. A golden brown egg is an overcooked egg. It's really that simple, eh? So we got the onion going in there, and we're going to give them just a little bit more of a color, but they're going to continue cooking with the potatoes, so as long as they're sweet. And right now, you know, we're in the middle of Vidalia season, Vidalia onion season, so that's what I got in there. I got some Vidalia onion in there. We're going to put the potatoes in there, and then we're going to put some, uh, we're going to cook them just for a second to give them a little head start, and then we'll put the sweet potatoes because they don't take as long, the sweet potato to cook. We're going to put salt and pepper in there. Salt and pepper. Measure carefully, eh? Salt and pepper, eh? <laughs> I'm always entertained by cooks that measure the salt and pepper with them little spoon, you know, the quarter inch spoon, I mean, the, the quarter teaspoon and all that. I'm always very entertained by those people. <laughs> There's enough to be entertained on YouTube, let me tell you. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so let me explain what I'm doing here so you understand the concept, okay? We're going to get everything in this bowl right here. Everything we're going to put in this bowl. 
including the cooked potatoes. Everything's going to go in this bowl, and then we're going to transfer all this into a cold pan, and we're going to go in a preheated oven at 375, and we're going to cook this thing. And when I take it out, you'll see what it's going to look like. It's amazing, okay? So, actually, you saw it on the promo. So, look, the potato got a head start. Let's put some sweet potatoes in there. All right, we're going to cook them up. I like to cook my potato at the beginning, especially with a cover on it, especially at the beginning of the first few minutes. And then when they're tender, I'll take out the covers. All right, we'll have the perfect recipe on our website. We'll put a link down there so you'll be able to get it. So we're going to let that cook for a second. In a minute, I'm going to put some, hey, I'm going to put some sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> we'll put some sun-dried tomatoes in there. So now let's deal with this right here. This is um, uh, uh, 14 eggs. My fry pan, I'm using a wall. That's a German uh, non-stick cookware, wall, W-O-L-L. -O -L -L -L. It's a fabulous fry pan. It's oven proof. And when it, you see how it comes out of there, it's fabulous. So I can put 14 eggs. You know, if you are concerned about too much yolks, I'm not really concerned about the, the yolks, but if you're concerned about the yolk, believe it or not, if you have 14 egg frittata, you can do seven whole eggs and then maybe 10 or 12 white, just the white. Get rid of some of the yolks in there if you're concerned. You would be amazed. You don't lose much of the quality at all. It's quite amazing, as a matter of fact. Uh, I do it a lot. And, um, and, and for you guys, I do, it, I do the real thing. But if I make it for myself for lunch, I usually do 14 white and, and, and seven yolks. And, uh, and it's really, really, really perfect. So you can take out an egg and, a, so, and, a, and an egg every other egg and a yolk every other egg. So look, do it however you want it. My fry pan fits 14 eggs. You're going to have to figure out what your fry pan is going to fit. A little salt and pepper, right? And then... Um, Ah, let me just uh, do the sun-dried tomatoes in here. We're probably ready for the sun-dried tomatoes. So let's put a little bit of sun-dried tomato in here. Doesn't matter if you put extra sun-dried tomatoes. Now you could add mushrooms. You could add spinach to your frittata. You can add whatever you want. All right, now no more cover. We good? We don't need the cover anymore. Right there, we're good to go. I'm putting a little bit of a mess here, so let me clean up. You know, I like to work clean. This is one of uh, the most important thing in the kitchen. You got to be clean. Clean kitchen is a happy kitchen. <laughs> all right, so all of those things, let me get them out of the way. The, egg, the potatoes are cooking, so we need them to cook, so we're in good shape. It's probably going to be a little too much potato in here. I'm probably not going to use all that either. So what else am I putting in here? I am putting some cheddar cheese. I have a beautiful English cheddar. It's called Costol. It's really, 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 really fabulous. A little Costol cheddar cheese. We're also going to put a little bit of garlic. I make this garlic puree with uh, garlic and olive oil. And I have a, uh, a video also on YouTube on that, how I make that. It's just a peel garlic and olive oil. And then I freeze it. So when I need garlic, I can just use it like that. It's really good. Put a little bit of hot sauce in there. Just a little bit of hot sauce. You don't have to put hot sauce if you don't want to, but why not? You could use brie cheese. Today we're going to use cheddar, and we're going to use parmigiano reggiano, and we're going to use some goat cheese. All right? So all we're going to do now, we're going to break the egg. We'll break the egg. Now, I don't mind putting a little air in there. With a, that's what I like to do with a machine. It makes the frittata slightly fluffy. So don't be afraid to put a little bit of air in there, okay? That's why the machine makes it easy to break the egg, okay? You certainly don't need it, okay? I'm sure your, um, your recipe would turn out great if you just mix the egg with a whisk. It'll be perfectly fine. Let me remove some of that stuff right here. Now, in today's recipe, let me get my spatula back. In today's recipe, I'm going to put a little more cheese, okay? You can never have too much cheese, okay? And then we're going to put a bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. This you have to measure carefully, yeah? <laughs> and then we're going to put some goat cheese. Now the potatoes. <laughs> Forget making the frittata. Let's just eat the potatoes. <laughs> they smell delicious. If you could be here, let me reduce my heat because now it's really cooking. 
I think they're going to be ready. They got to be ready. The, the, the idea is very simple, okay? Whatever you put in the frittata has to be cooked. So, broccoli, cooked. Uh, uh, potatoes, cooked. You want to put mushroom, saute them in a the pan. You want to put spinach, saute them in a the pan. Everything you put has to be cooked, okay? It's really that simple, eh? Let me test it. Let me test the potato. Mmm. 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 Let me cook them a little more. Just a, just a little bit more. I'm going to cook them just a little bit more. And then it'll be ready. Okay, so. We got a, uh, we got a, we're going to put our broccoli. Broccoli. It's just blue broccoli florette. Then I've been poached or steamed. So they're ready to go. You can put broccoli. You can put whatever you want. There you go. All right, and, and drain him. A little bit of a chopped parsley, right there, right? Basil will be good in there too, right? Eh? Right, mix it all up. And then we're gonna put the goat cheese. Now the goat cheese, I like to uh, kind of crumble it. You see, look, look. Now, if you like goat cheese, then do it this way. If you don't like goat cheese, then don't even put it in. <laughs> I like to see it, crumble it like that. And then all of a sudden you get a nice surprise. You get a nice big, big, big piece of goat cheese. And this is a domestic goat cheese. It's actually a, a Florida goat cheese. Um, and I love a beautiful creamy goat cheese. Eh? You know what you could put in here too also? This is fabulous. Is uh, uh, brie. Put a triple cream brie in your frittata. You know, remember, you're only as good as the ingredient you're using. You're only as good as the ingredient you're using. Just remember that. That's really important, right? Because at the end of the day, you're only as good as the ingredient you're doing. Meaning, you know what they say? Garbage in, garbage out. It's exactly true. All right? So now, what we'll do, now what you see here, a lot of people do is now take all these eggs and put it in here in a hot fry pan. We do not do this. We do not do this at all. As a matter of fact, let me get myself my, my... In fact, we do not do this at all. We just take the potatoes. I don't need all of this. This is all too much. Right there. I'm going to put them aside. We mix all this up. You see? Mix all this up. Oh, yeah. You'll see when they come out. You see? Mix it all up. All right? Mix all that up. Well, this is going to be a really nice frittata. Very nice frittata right there. Very, very nice. Okay, so now, let me explain how we're going to prepare the pan. That's very important to prepare the pan. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil. We don't need a lot. Then I'm going to take a brush. Okay, I want you to see that. It's really, really important. We'll take a brush. Right there, and I'm taking the olive oil. And this is a beautiful um, uh, garlic olive oil, roasted garlic olive oil. Look, look, I'm taking the oil now, and I'm rubbing it on the side. And I'm going to show you the trick. It's really easy, the trick, okay? Yeah, everything I do is easy. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, friends. You can all become fabulous cook. You know what? I love to do this. I love to make this on a Sunday. And then during the week for my lunch, I just make a little salad. And I serve it with a little salad. It's delicious. You can serve it with the bell pepper coolie. And, um, and we, got a, we got a recipe on that on our website also. A little bell pepper coulis or a little tomato coulis. That would be delicious. So now, see what I'm doing, right? Putting the oil. Let me tell you what's very important now. We're going to take a frittata. We're going to pour right in that pan right now. Just like this. Now let me show you what is very important, friends. Let me tell you what's very important now. All you're doing now, you just push. Push it in. Don't mix it. Let me explain you why. You don't understand it right away. You don't understand it right away. You see what's happening? All of the olive oil, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil I'm putting, guess where it is? It's right there around. You see it? That's beautiful roasted garlic olive oil. And that's going to make it super, super easy for the frittata to come out. You see? Now, if you mix it, the olive oil will be mixed up in there. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. It'll be delicious. But there's no reason to have it. This is what we put on the outside. So now we're going to go in in the oven. 
set up a 375. This guy's gonna take a while to cook. It's gonna take at least 35, 40 minutes to cook a 375 slowly. The idea, friends, is we wanna make sure we don't do it fast. We wanna make sure it doesn't turn. A little bit golden brown is okay. A little bit of golden brown, but not burn golden brown like so many people do it. And the secret was to go in a cold pan. Because imagine if you put an egg in a hot pan, it's gonna start cooking immediately, right? And what about the one in the middle? Or not cook yet, but the one in the bottom is already cremated. <laughs> so now you understand the concept. Cold pan, everything prepared in advance. I'll see you in about 35, 40 minutes when we finish and we're gonna take it out of the oven and when do you see how beautiful it is? Okay, the frittata should be ready. It smells beautiful. Now we're gonna take it out of the oven. Look at it, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So now, what we need to do, friends, we need to flip it. And for this, you need one of those uh, oversized towels. I get those at the Hilton. <laughs> uh, um, you can get them at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> so look, no motion here, okay? Between this and this, we're gonna flip this guy, right? And all we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip it this way, right? We're gonna do this, this way, right there. We're gonna do one of those. <laughs> It's very important, friends, very important. And it should come right out. Look at this. Hold on, I gotta get another plate. I gotta get another plate. We're not serving on that side. Look how beautiful that is, right? We're gonna flip it. Voila. Carefully, 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 carefully take it out. So it looks absolutely beautiful. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top of it. And this, friends, is a frittata. Look how beautiful that is. This is a frittata. You can make this in advance, make it on Sunday night, you'll have a nice slice of frittata every day for lunch, it's gonna be fabulous. So I like to serve it with a bell pepper coulis. So just a little spoon of coulis, that's all you need. A little spoon goes a long way. And uh, you can get the recipe and that on our website. And hey, we're gonna play it. Look at this frittata, friends. Look at this. Now, I don't know about your frittata, but I like mine to be nice and uh, a little runny. Not, you know, uh, not runny, 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 but look at this. Look how beautiful that is. It's nice and moist, just the way I like it. I hate a dry eggs. This is perfect. This is like, ooh, yes, gonna be delicious. Mm -hmm.